All right, today, Python list comprehensions versus the filter function. So we're gonna learn when to use list comprehensions, when to use the filter function, pros and cons of each, etc. So let's crack right into it. Um, I created a list here, um, variable A, and let's say that we wanted to filter out everything below two. So we wanted to return three through five. Um, so how would we do that with a list comprehension? And then how would we do that with the filter function? So I'll show you first with a list comprehension, uh, you might do something like I for I in A, and that returns everything. And then we add our filter to the right, where we might say if I greater than two, okay? So that is our filter right here. This if statement acts as a filter in a list comprehension context. Um, and then, you know, we return three through five. Now with the filter function, what would that look like? So this is our filter function. And there's two arguments that need to be passed here. The first is a function and the second is an iterable. Iter iterable, whatever. <laughs> so those are uh, the two arguments that you need to pass to our filter function. So since we don't have a function yet that's gonna filter everything um, greater than two or less than two, we're gonna need to use lambda. So we will use lambda i, i greater than two. And then our second argument is our list, which is a. Uh, so we run this and we get a filter object. Uh, that's important, I'll come back to that in a second. But we can wrap list around that um, just to return it nice and we get three through five. So there you have it, two different ways where you could filter out numbers, two ways to uh, filter things in Python. The first using a list comprehension with an if statement to the right, and the second is with the filter function, and in this case using a lambda and the list function as well. So again, these are the two ways you can filter things in Python with a list comprehension or with a filter function, um, but these two examples um, we don't have a function that we're passing here. So we're using, we're doing this raw. We're using lambda and we're using an if statement. But if you had a function, things would look a little different. So let's create a function now and uh, let's see what happens. So we'll do, uh, let's say greater than two to which we pass an integer, um, our argument i, and then we'll return um, i greater than two. Okay, that should be good. So there's our function gr2. And we can bring back our list comprehension here. And instead of doing if i greater than two explicitly, uh, we can wrap greater than two around, and that should give us the exact same thing. So just to show them both um, side by side, here we're using an if statement um, and doing the, uh, the filtering manually and then here we're using our function. So two ways to use list comprehensions uh, with filters, one with the function and one just writing if statements. Cool, so now let's see what that looks like for the filter function. And again, uh, this is our filter function with just the lambda, and we can replace this lambda with our greater than two function. Uh, so we run this again, the exact same result, and you can see these are the four ways I wanted to show you. So two with list comprehensions, two with filters, um, two with functions, and then two with um, lambdas or not functions, whatever you want to call it. So th there's four different ways to do basically the same thing. And there's going to be um, trade-offs to which one you want to use. There's speed trade-offs. There's... Um, you know, complexity trade-offs, there's syntax trade-offs, um, and there's what's just being returned. So if I didn't have this list wrapped around here, when we return filter, uh, we're gonna be returning an iterable. And so you have to decide, do I wanna return an iterable or do I need to really explicitly return a list, which a list comprehension would do? So that's a trade-off, an iterable versus a list being returned. All right, one last cool thing I wanna show you is a trick that you can do with the filter function that I think most people aren't aware of using none as the first argument. And when we pass a list here, um, I'll just show you what gets returned because it's kind of interesting. 
So wrap this in a list so that you guys can see it. And you see what's getting returned is one and two. That zero did not get returned. We could even add another zero, make it clear. The zero is not getting returned. And what this none does is it basically filters out anything falsy from what's being returned. So I could add true here and then I could add false here. And you can see that it returns the true and not the false. So uh, this none argument is filtering out all the falsy values. Um, doesn't have to be an integer necessarily. Um, anything falsy. Actually, I'm, let's try an empty string versus a string with something in it. And yeah, so the empty string doesn't get passed and the, the string with values in it, the truthy string, gets passed. So there's a cool trick with none because if you had to do that um, with a list comprehension, it wouldn't look pretty. I think you would have to do i for i in 0, 1, 2, if, and I think we're going to have to compare bools here. So we, uh, we would say if bool i uh, does not equal bool none, right? So this bool none is of course falsy. And then uh, what we're going to do is see if that bool i is falsy. So we can run this. Yeah, I need to use the word in instead of for here. And yep, we return that and it returns one, two. Um, I could even add true and false in here, just so you guys get the feel for it. And one, two, true gets returned. So um, show you guys this straight up again, uh, the comparison of using um, none in the filter versus doing this in a list comprehension. So this is just one way where maybe uh, using the filter syntax is probably better than using the list comprehension syntax. But of course, overall, you should be using the list comprehension. This is an exception, not the rule. Just something cool I wanted to show you guys. All right, so the next thing I wanted to move on was something we mentioned briefly, and I wanted to give you some background for, and that is how um, this is returning a filter object in Python 3. When you use the filter uh, function, you're going to return a filter object and not a list. And what's interesting is if we went to Python 2, um, so of course here is Python 3, and now in this black and white thing, we're using uh, black and white shell, we're using Python 2. And if we did filter here, um, hopefully we can use none in Python 2, not 100% sure. Um, sure, so we can use that, and this is returning a list. So in Python 2, filter used to return a list, and now in Python 3, it returns a Python iterable. So this is a change that took place in the shift from Python 2 to Python 3. And I just wanted to share uh, a little bit of the history behind that with you guys. I talked about it in my uh, list comprehension versus map video as well. So this can be a little bit of a repeat, but for anyone just watching the filter video, uh, just know that you know in, in, in 2009, Guido, the creator of Python, um, wrote this release for Python 3 when it first came out. And one of the very first things, and this is a huge long um, documentation, but one of the very first things he mentions is how now we're returning iterators instead of lists, specifically for map and filter. So you can see this is a big change, Python 3, we're now returning iterators instead of lists. And what's interesting about what he writes here is that if you need a list, he explicitly recommends using a wrapping list around map, but he says that a better fix is just to use a list comprehension, especially when the original code uses Lambda. So basically he's saying in a filter context, uh, you should not be using filter with Lambda. This is a situation where we don't want to be in. If you're going to use filter, you should be using um, an actual function here as this first argument, such as our greater than two. So this um, is kind of acceptable, but using a lambda is something you don't want to do. And I think speed has a, a big role to play there. And we're going to look at speed in a second um, when I just kind of get done talking about the history here. So I guess that's pretty much all you need to know uh, regarding the documentation, 
But I did want to show you that there was also a famous article by Guido in 2005 uh, when we were still on Python 2. Um, so think about how long ago that was, 15 years ago. Um, so prior to the release of Python 3, and they were planning the release of Python 3, um, Guido basically said that um, you know Lambda Filter and Map are going to stay, even though he, he personally wasn't a big fan. He was originally in favor of dropping filter, dropping map. He just didn't even want these things in Python 3. So again, the, the point of this video is list comprehension versus filter, and filter almost didn't even make it into Python 3. Guido was not a fan of it. He'd much rather you use that if statement to the right of the list comprehension. Cool. Um, all right, so that should be enough background. And then so just back to our Python 3 environment, um, I just wanted to time a couple things for you and we'll see how that goes. So to, to check the time, we can do from time it import time it. And so now we have uh, that package available to us. And what were those functions we were doing before? So we had our four functions, right? Uh, so let's just start with this guy and then what would be the uh, list comprehension equivalent? Okay, cool. So here we have our equivalent uh, function and list comprehension. And what we're gonna do um, is wrap time it around this and see how long it takes to run. Okay, so our filter, right, I think I would have to import A, so, okay, I just cleared the screen, because uh, passing A in time it, uh, passing variables in time it is a little tricky, so we'll do it without our uh, assigned variable, and we'll just do the list straight up, one, two, three, and that takes 0.71 seconds, and then here, I have to replace A with one, two, three, we can run this and much faster for the list comprehension versus filter with the Lambda. And let's run it one more time just to see uh, that it's consistent. And yeah, so basically using a list comprehension uh, is much quicker than using filter with the Lambda. Now that we know that this is clear, let's see what that looks like if we were using, um, using a function. And to do it using a function, I think what you have to do is add a second argument and do from main import gr2. So I think that that would run. Okay, so that runs, but we're not using it yet. And what we're gonna do is wrap gr2 around in our list comprehension. So, there we go, using our function gr2, instead of just doing it straight up, it was actually slower to use our function for the same task. And now let's do this for um, our filter. And here we write gr2, and then again we have to import um, from um, import gr2, run that and 0.67. So it was still slower uh, using the filter with GR2 than it was um, for using the list comprehension with GR2. So in both um, situations, it was faster to use the list comprehension instead of the filter function. So I guess that does it for speed. Um, list comprehension is clearly the way to go and using a function instead of Lambda is probably the way to go. Um, I guess the last thing I wanted to show you, just a, a pro and con thing that I, I should have mentioned earlier, is chaining. So let's just say uh, we wanted to do, um, we wanted to see every number greater than two and then multiply that by five. Um, so what's our A again? One, two, three, four, five. So we could do um, a normal list comprehension and do I, um, I x5 for I in A if I greater than two. Okay, so 15, 20, 25. So what, what I'm trying to show you here is we're using both a map and a filter in a sense. So here's our filter and then here's our map where we're, we're mapping every valuable to this times five function. Um, so what would this look like um, if we had to chain things, right? So we would have to do um, list filter 
And then what's our function here? Um, lambda i i times five. And then we also have to map uh, greater than two to our list. So that should work. True, true, true. Um, I don't know, something like that. So I, I guess I'd have to refactor that a little bit. But the point is, is that if you were going to chain filter and map in the same um, iterable, um, it's just going to be a very long syntax versus what you get out of the box with a list comprehension. So one of the benefits of using a list comprehension is just very easy to uh, map things and filter things um, in the same list comprehension. Whereas if you're trying to, to do that same activity um, without a list comprehension, you have to use a filter and a map and the syntax can get quite long. Um, so just something to keep in mind there. Um, one of the benefits of using a list comprehension, I guess to conclude, list, using a list comprehension is going to be much more Pythonic. It's what Guido would like you to do. It's probably faster. And you probably never even have to use the filter function or the map function if you don't want to. Uh, you can just use list comprehensions all day. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.